Hey, this is Travis. Today we're going to talk about Web3 protocols. We're going to start with some background on software protocols in general, looking at the internet protocols. Then we're going to talk about the evolution of the internet from Web1, Web2, all the way to the emerging Web3. And then the really interesting thing about Web3 is that there are Web3 tokens, and these are a new disruptive force that are really changing the dynamics for open source protocols. They power these Web3 protocols in new ways that have never been seen before, and we're going to talk about what that means for a product designer in Web3. Let's get into it. So let's start with the internet. This is something that my entire life I have taken for granted, at least the technology behind it. Um, ever since I was young, obviously, I started using the internet, but I never really understood what was going on in the background. So just as a short primer here, like the most simple way to explain the internet is that it's a connection of, it's a network of connected computers, and these computers can communicate with one another. So you can physically link computers together, you can link them to routers and modems, and uh, this is the physical infrastructure of the internet. But then you need a, you need a series of software protocols on top of this, this infrastructure that define the rule set for how these computers share information with one another. So it could be anything like, how do you find the destination of another computer on the network? How do you send a really large data, a really large message? How do you break that into individual data packets and send that over the wire to the other computer? And then how does that computer reassemble those data packets into the original message? So uh, this is what the internet protocols do. And uh, of course, these internet protocols are used by billions of people every single day. Without these protocols, we wouldn't have a functioning global internet. So these are very important and you may not have heard them before if you're not in the computer science realm. So let's get into uh, some of the main internet protocols. We're not going to spend too much time on this because we're not, um, as product designers, we're, this, this channel isn't about technical product design, uh, like the computer science behind things. But I think it's a really good idea just to get a rough understanding of how this internet is operating. So you can break down the internet protocols into four layers. We have an application layer, TCP, IP, and hardware layer. And let's go through each one right now. So one of the main use cases with the internet is for me to view a web page. So I go to google.com. Okay, just opening this new browser uh, took me there. It took me to Google, right? So what, what just happened is my computer um, sent a, a message requesting that a Google server uh, send me an HTML file corresponding to this web page right here so that this web page could load in this um, browser. So what's actually happening there, one of the most popular application protocols is something called HTTP, Hypertext Transmission Protocol, or I think Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Let me just check here so I get it right. Hypertext Transmission Protocol. This is, uh, there are different functions within HTTP, but there's something called an HTTP GET request. And this is basically requesting, it's a message that is going to request an HTML file from a server. So that's what my computer assembles first, and then it passes it down to the Oh, the TCP layer, which is the transmission control protocol layer. And what this does is it takes a message and it figures out how to break that message into smaller data packets. We can't send the entire message. It's just too many bytes of information uh, over the internet. It could get <clears throat> some software could get corrupt or sorry, some data could get corrupted by doing that. But breaking it into smaller data packets allows us to send one at a time 
and for the receiving computer to uh, receive each of these data packets, ensure that none of the data packets are missing, and then reassemble those data packets on the server end so that it can say, oh, this is an HTTP GET request. That is what the original message is. So that is what the TCP, the transmission control protocol does. Now, before it gets sent to the server, uh, this HTTP request and those individual data packets, each data packet gets, it gets passed to the internet protocol or IP. And the main function here is for the internet protocol to um, assign, it's kind of like where is the destination of each of these data packets. It needs to send it to this Google server that I'm requesting the HTML document from. The Google server has an IP address and to any connect internet connected device has a unique IP address and that is how that is the destination of that computer on the internet network. So this um, so each of those data packets gets assigned the uh, Google server IP address and uh, and then gets passed lastly down to the hardware protocol, which is just a uh, it's taking these, these data packets and then um, converting them into electrical signals that can be passed through the physical internet infrastructure, right? So uh, each of these data packets get passed through the, this infrastructure as an electrical signal, and then the receiving Google server uh, does a similar process all the way back up this protocol chain uh, in order to interpret my original HTTP GET message. So that is the internet in terms of the protocols that are on the back end that are running it. These are open source protocols. So they were developed starting in the 80s, I believe, but really coming into their own in the 90s uh, by independent researchers and by nonprofit organizations. It's different than how we think of the internet today. Most of the internet is run by these for-profit companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon. They are building products on top of these open source internet protocols. Okay, now this is a really good point. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna talk about the evolution of the internet from web one to web two, which is kind of where we're currently at with these big centralized companies building products on top of the free open source internet uh, protocols. And now we have this emerging web three ecosystem, which has to do with blockchain, with crypto. And we're gonna talk about how web three tokens are really gonna disrupt a lot of how we understand the internet today. Before I thought the internet was the static technology. Again, I kind of took it for granted, but one of the most compelling and um, exciting things in my journey about learning all of this is that the internet is very much so still evolving and Web3 is this next evolutionary phase that it's just now emerging, but it's really gonna redefine how people access information in the coming years. So let's get into it in the next videos. Thank you.